Welcome back to another episode of Psychosmos. Today, we are going to address some comments about the sacred secretion, particularly about different details revolving around the process. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back to another episode. Thanks for watching. We are going to discuss some, uh, particularly one comment that we got. We're going to keep the person anonymous just because. Um, but it was a really good question. And the question that the person was posing revolved around sacred secretion and the different information that they were seeing. So basically, their question was something along the lines of, they hear a lot of teachings about the sacred secretion where it starts in the brain, uh, the oil that gets differentiated in the pineal and the pituitary, and then it travels down the spine to the solar plexus where it is united with the breath and becomes the seed. And that's kind of Carrie's version of it. That's his mapping out of it. Um, then it goes down to the sacrum. It is vitalized by that raw primal energy of creation, the sexual energy that is used for proper purposes. It's infused with that, then it travels back up the spine to the brain and it sits in the brain for the period that the moon is in your sun sign and then bing bang boom enlightenment and then the other version that they were seeing was that the fluid travels down and then it unites with a seed that is born separately and then it goes down to the sacrum and then it goes back up but there's uh discrepancies in times like it takes much longer mm. and you know sometimes you also see you know it stays in the sacrum and that's the tomb or it stays in the brain and that's the tomb or you know even Carrie doesn't say that it travels down the spine he says that it travels down the vagus nerve so if you start looking into this you see people are generally talking about the same thing but the exact specifics of the path um, are a little different and mm -hmm. that is really important to, to recognize and we're glad that this person asked because it can be a little confusing um, and there's just a lot of people talking about it right now, and sometimes the information can conflict with each other. Right, and we have a few reasons as to why this is happening, right? The first reason is because we do not have modern sciences and uh, expertise, money, things like that, that have gone into funding the research of the sacred secretion. Uh, you're looking at it. It's us, <laughs> and it's Kelly, and it's Bonacci, and a couple other people, but it's basically us. Uh, and... So because of that, all we have are old writings from people like Carey or Percival or Manly P. Hall or any of these other old esoteric teachers who had to write about these things very cryptically so that they wouldn't, they wouldn't get killed at the times. This was not something that you could openly talk about, nor could you openly talk about for thousands of years. Uh, so it's been something that has been very difficult to get real accurate data on. So when we found all of these discrepancies years and years and years ago, probably about three or four or five years ago, we started putting together not only through our own experiences, but by finding more information about what's, what's legit and what really isn't. So the question in part is about these two separate, well, or multiple separate ways to interpret the sacred secretion and how it really works, right? But there are some key things that we got to keep in mind. Um, number one, uh, basically, other than things like inversions and flippings and this and this and this, energy works relatively the same way uh, across all degrees of creation. So when we're looking at the brain, which is considered the, the godliest part of the body, this, this would effectively be in the Holy Trinity, this would be the Father, and then, you know, the heart and uh, all this, the lungs and all that midsection would be like the Mother, the Holy Spirit, and then the lower regions, which is kind of where we exist, would be the genitalia region, the sun, right? So basically, the, the, the issue that we have with all these different interpretations is that people don't have, we, we didn't have the science, we don't have the data. There's really no way in uh, today to figure out what it is unless you're doing what we're doing and actually doing trial by fire and trying to piece together the information that we have. So these are really like the, the, the multiple different avenues that we have, but this is our opinion as to, to what the process essentially is and does. Um, the first pr step of this process is it's basically from a higher level, it's energy. So, so, so God is energy, right? So everything starts as an energy. That's why the classroom gets pinged to start create, start this whole process. Um, the brain, more than likely through the endocrine system, the pituitary does secrete some chemicals in to to get a response, but they are not the milk and honey. The milk and honey comes afterwards, after the sacred secretion has already been activated within the brain. Um, so the milk and honey secreted by the pineal and pituitary would be after you have already awakened or unlocked. That's like the whole analogy of the land and milk and honey anyway. Um, so the endocrine system 
unrelated is going to re potentially release some chemicals, but it's going to start as an energetic manifestation that will then trickle down the body. Then the body has the midsection, which is the the solar plexus, this is the manger where the seed is uh, basically created. And the way that that happens is from all the organs of the body converging all their different chemicals to the central gravitational point. So the energy of the brain tells the rest of the body to start this process. And so all these chemicals are going to start basically leaking towards the midsection in the celiac plexus area of the body. Um, and there's like a whole bunch of science that we're working on right now to, to actually show and prove this to you guys. It's just, it, that video is gonna take a lot of time because we're still expunging each and every step of this process. But then eventually all of those chemicals are gonna go down. They're gonna dip into the sacral uh, uh, plexus, the sacral chakras, down into where uh, you know the genital region is. It's going to get harmonized with that raw, viral, potent physical energy. You know, it's it's really much more of a of a of a physical energy that hits this and causes a bunch of alchemical properties. And then that's going to travel up back into the brain, and that chemical concoction is going to sit in your brain when the moon enters your sun sign. Okay, so that is where this process is. That's why the preparation is about, you know, we say three days before because we're trying to give people an introductory thing. But to this person's comment, she or he had had communicated that they felt as though, uh, you know, having the cycle be an entire month is really unrealistic. And it pretty much is, but you want to try to live this process throughout the whole month, each cycle as best as you can. You want to live to the sacred secretion standard, to your high stability, basically at all times. However, with that being said, there are going to be times where you're going to want to take it back, be lazy. Maybe you like to drink. Maybe you like to smoke. Maybe you, maybe you want to have sex, whatever. Um, and we're not making those recommendations, but we're not going to tell people they can't do that because we're not we're not the types of people who, who do that kind of thing. It, it's um, about it's about trying your best and making you know small small manageable changes to your habits that build up over time and just keeping a special focus on that time of the month. That's mm -hmm. why we're constantly focused on that. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people have pointed out too, in a similar vein as that, that it seems like it seems like this sort of thing wouldn't work if you were living in debauchery for like the rest of the month and then you stopped for like three days. And it's like, yeah, that, that's, that's absolutely correct. Right. Yeah. But that's not what we're saying. But no. we're, we're trying to be reasonable and like we're not perfect because nobody's perfect. And it's just about trying your best and focusing on that particular time of the month. Like Matt says, a few days before and a few days after. So just, just a week of the month, just try to be a little better with your habits. Mm -hmm. Like that's really the focus. And if you start doing that over time, you'll start to want to do more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And like that's how you're gonna get to a place where you're doing consistent habits and you're feeling good about yourself and your body and your spirit and mm -hmm. you know everything like that. And the details are super important, but it's so long as you're maintaining the, the relative high level details of when your cycle relatively starts, when it relatively ends, what you're supposed to be doing, those types of things, it's fine. You know, some people get caught up on the details of, oh, what if, does it, does the chemical travel through the vagus nerve or through the spinal column? There, there's, it's both really, but there's too, there's too much to, there's too much to that question. People think that asking the questions about the sacred secretion, they're going to get simple answers. They're not. And that's why we struggle sometimes to make that really hard hitting uh, content because there's so many little details to this. I there's mean, we, a lot of moving parts. Yeah, a lot. We can make a whole 40, 50, 60 minute video on just the, the hormones that are involved, let alone the whole entire process. And we probably will. And we probably <laughs> will. Point. So, so the, the point I'm getting at is yes, the details absolutely matter, but in the context of you, the beginner, the initiate, the introductory, even an intermediate, uh, all that really, really matters is the timing and what you should be doing. So we are going to be making more content on timing and what you should be doing is basically the, the most important aspects of this. But um, the one thing I do want to comment on, which is in reference to people commenting and asking these questions, it goes in part with the timing and everything else is the Western versus sidereal topic of conversation. People who use sidereal are so sure that they're right. And I love people who use sidereal, but I'm sorry. It has to be communicated what the actual difference is because people think 
too simply. I'm sorry, but people think way too simply about these topics. Western astrology, for people who don't know, and sidereal astrology, it's basically Western versus Eastern, okay? Specifically the Vedas. The, the, the Indian people have come up with the sidereal astrology. Um, sidereal astrology tracks the exact location of where uh, planetary objects are in the sky relative to the, the signs that are behind them and such. Western astrology looks at where they are in reference to the equator. And the unfortunate reality is that the energy, a lot of people who think sidereal is correct because it's more accurate based off of where it is in the sky, that is true. Western astrology actually is wrong as far as where it is. So for example, if it says that the moon is in Aries, the moon is actually in Pisces because it's one sign behind. This is because of the great year or the Yuga cycle. I'm going to make a side video about this because it's just going to be too long. This is what you need to know overall, okay? Energy and light work at angles. They, they, they work at pin, pinpointed angles. Western astrology exists because those angles, the, the, the determination of the angles based on the Western equivalents are, uh, at this moment in our great year cycle, fundamentally more accurate than sidereal, okay? But with that being said, sidereal is still correct as well because it's not only the physical placement, but it's also where we get a portion of the energy. So you have to zoom out and think of it this way. Uh, you're going at one, basically one twelfth of a cycle into the sidereal and eleven twelfths into the cycle of the western. Uh, that might not make a lot of sense to people, but basically uh, I'm a sun cancer. I have a little bit of Gemini in me because of the sidereal way that, uh, that we have moved through the great year cycle, the way that angles work. We get a little bit of the energy from the previous sign. So in the terms of sidereal versus western, again, I would say western is more accurate, especially when it comes to tracking timings. So what you want to do is look at the moon, see where the moon is in your cycle, and then track appropriately. With that being said, I, I still recommend the three, the three sign rule. Go take it western astrology, go the sign uh, before and the sign after. And if you just do that, then that's the best place for you to start. Uh, astrologically speaking, from an from a, uh, an introductory standpoint on sacred secretion. A big thing to keep in mind with this whole process is that you have to be aware of what's going on in your body and how it makes you feel and what's going on. Because at the end of the day, anybody can tell you when exactly you're going to feel what sensation where. And ultimately, you could not feel that. Or you could feel it somewhere else. Or you could feel it less powerfully or more powerfully than described. And like, that's going to come down to you and you're the only one that can really track that and be aware of that and observe it. And it's not to make judgments on yourself or anything like that, it's just to be aware and just to observe. And that's gonna give you more success, I think, than anything ultimately. You need the knowledge from the sources and you need to you know, absorb information from different people, from different walks of life, with different interpretations of all this stuff. But ultimately, what you do for yourself and what habits you apply that produce the best results for you those are the most important ones so if you just really struggle with meditating like i'm really not great with meditating to be honest if you struggle with sitting still clearing your mind and just you know ridding it of unnecessary thoughts and just observing your thoughts pass by if you really struggle with that to the point where when you try you just get frustrated and you maybe start to feel like a little resentment toward yourself or something like that that you're not good enough that you can't get this meditation thing or something like that don't do that don't sweat it Find something else that works for you because that's the most important thing. You can always come back and try meditation again, you know, maybe it's just not at this point for you in your spiritual journey and that's fine, you know, just find something that works for you. You don't have to do super complicated yoga. You can just start with doing a few poses a day, you know, you don't have to do super intense, no thought meditation. You can just try sitting outside and just observing things and not really judging it, just observing the nature and the world around you and like that is fundamentally going to build a better base for you and cause more habits to stick and to resonate with you than trying to force yourself to do these things that you feel like you need to do or copy to be an adept. or copy somebody because exactly. you admire them it's like it's like he said basically figure it out for yourself the whole purpose of psychosmos that what we do here is not to give you a step-by-step -step guide to how to do it for you. It's a step-by-step -step guide on how to generalize it so then you can fill in the details and figure it out for yourself. 
it's like a big thing with us. If we wanted to be Tony Robbins life coach that just told you, okay, you're going to eat a banana for breakfast and you're going to do that. Like, what's the point? It's There's no fun. You're not building it for yourself. You got to build your own temple. And of course, you can take things. You can take things from us, other people. But don't look for somebody who's going to say, let me explain how you're going to live your entire life because it's just, it's not going to work for you specifically. So do the right things. Uh, take some of the information that we said about the timings in this video. We're going to expand on that make a better video about the timing of the sacred secretion process. Um, it's going to be much more in depth. Uh, and uh, when when we make that video, then you'll have more answers. But yeah, this was just a video con responding to some comments. Um, um, also look out for we'll be having a video in the future um, going a little deeper into the anatomy and the hormone aspects of the sacred secretion and sure. the chemical stuff. Because there, there, there is a chemical reflection. There is always a physical reflection yep. or component or image of yep. a spiritual thing as yep. above, so below. Yep. Um, so we're not saying that that is the sacred secretion or even the mechanism that drives it, but it's the reflection of it and it's important. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are really interested in it. So we are going to have a video that goes more in depth about that. Yep. And remember folks, it's, it's ethereal, physical, ethereal, physical, ethereal, physical. And it's like a, it's like a stock ticker. It goes up and down, up and down, but you have to have those ebbs and flows. It rides like a wave. You have the ethereal, physical, ethereal, physical. So the process starts ethereally as energy, goes down physically, comes back up and produces physical con concoctions that heal the body etherically. It gets flipped almost, right? So it starts energy, physical, physical gets brought up, energy goes back down. And it's the way that everything functions. It's, the, it's, it's everything. So just keep that in mind. Higher level things and lower level things are all work on the same level uh, as, once you understand the mechanics that are behind it. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. We love you guys very much. Stay tuned for more content. Make sure you like, subscribe, you know, do all the do. Go check out our Patreon. Go check out our book. Go buy stuff. That would be great. Please. Yeah, please, please. We're begging. We're, we're so poor. No, I'm joking. Uh, support us if you like. It'd be really appreciated. And uh, yeah, guys, we're just going to keep on trucking. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Take care. Brush your hair. Take care, brush your hair.